Even among the cat videos, daily vlogs, and not so quality ukulele covers, there's always been educational aspects to YouTube. From how-to videos to Zay Frank's weird intellectual semi-educational projects across several online platforms, YouTube included, and the clips recorded off the History Channel that would very occasionally make their way into high school social studies classrooms. But the past couple of years specifically, academia and intellectualism on YouTube have flourished at least as much as the site's edutainment. The fusion of education and entertainment, and seeing the importance of making learning enjoyable. In 2006, Saul Khan founded Khan Academy, a project that provided tools to learners of all subjects to become more proficient in the things they were studying. All of his videos were posted on YouTube. This independent professional channel got a lot of attention and now has more than 700,000 subscriptions on YouTube and tons of instructional additional features and tools on the Khan Academy website. Khan Academy is non-profit but has received large amounts of donations from Bill Gates, Google, Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, and a lot of other notable donors. Theoretically, Khan Academy was a big push for other YouTube educational channels. In 2010 and 2011, a lot of independent YouTubers started teaching math and science. Viheart started teaching math in November of 2010, Minute Physics in June of 2011, and Number File in October of 2011. Other websites originally not aff affiliated with YouTube, such as Big Think, originally named a YouTube for smart people, TED Talks and Soul Pancake soon started to follow suit and post their content on YouTube. Content is also regularly posted on site on the site by creators like PBS, Smithsonian, Bill Nye, and NASA. And now all these independent professional educators have been joined by schools like MIT, UC Berkeley, Stanford, Yale, Harvard, Dartmouth, Carnegie Mellon, Penn State, and the University of Phoenix. In 2011, YouTube announced that views of educational videos had doubled since the previous year, with close to 80% of those views coming from outside of the United States. So maybe Khan's mission statement of changing education for the better by providing a free world-class education for anyone anywhere is working. The annual Google Science Fair's mission statement says, We believe that universal access to technology and information can truly make the world a better place. We also believe the need for access to useful information transcends all borders. And John Green repeats the sentiment with the quote, what YouTube really imagines is a world in which any person with high-speed internet access can, if he or she is adequately motivated and works hard, have access to a good education through online video. As you can imagine, with so many creators, means of distribution, and prospective consumers, the YouTube universe can get pretty convoluted pretty fast. YouTube's way of organizing this is through their YouTube EDU portal. They've even created a filter for schools to sign up free of charge that only allows access to videos deemed academic and appropriate and disables all comment feeds. The YouTube educational filter organizes videos by the content provider, of which there are more than a thousand, as well by hundreds of playlists by subject and by three broad categories, K-12 learning, college and education learning, and lifelong learning. These are often used as teachers' aids in classrooms. YouTube education focuses a lot on changing discourse by starting lively discussion. The technology hook has also reportedly helped make a lot of students interested in content. YouTube education creators realize that we have to progress and revolutionize education as, te as technology progresses. Think, just think of Schoolhouse Rock with the catchy tune, Conjunction Junction, What's Your Function? But what are the benefits and downfalls of deinstitutionalizing education? How will disrupting the monopoly that formal establishments have on learning affect communication and education? How will it affect our educators and our students? Well, by bringing education online, people believe that we'll have easier access, different type of learners will be able to learn more efficiently, we'll put more money into quality products, and information will be updated easily. Possibly there'll be much better communication between instructor and learner. What's really important in the case of these unprecedented educational formats, it seems, though, is the intention of the consumer and the creator. As in all media, integrity is vital. But what does that look like for YouTube and for educational YouTube? From the creator's perspective, integrity ideally looks like non-commercial motives, 
easy accessibility, and up-to-date accurate information. For consumers, it just means being genuinely interested in intellectualism and academia, and making an effort to work hard and be motivated to figure things out. One of my favorite edutainment channels on YouTube is The Brain Scoop, and as a new series, there's an interesting story about how it came into existence. Once upon a time, Hank Green, one half of the World Wide Web renowned Vlog Brothers channel, took a trip to the University of Montana's Zoological Museum. There, him and his friend, who also happens to be a World Wide Web renowned vlogger, Michael Aranda, met a volunteer student curator by the name of Emily Grassley. Emily showed Michael and Hank a bunch of taxidermied animals and talked science for a while and then made an awesome Vlog Brothers video. The subscribers of the Vlog Brothers channel, of which there are 1,020,576, loved it. Hank was astounded by the positive responses that the video got and he was also really impressed with how Emily came across on camera. In addition to being half of the Vlog Brothers, Hank also happens to be an internet guy that likes to produce web series about really cool stuff. So him, Michael Aranda, and Emily Grassley got together and decided that Emily should have her own YouTube channel, hence the Brain Scoop was born. With so much internet publicity from Hank and Michael, the channel got more than 30,000 subscribers within a day of the first video being posted. The web series is now two months into its year-long run and has 84,110 subscribers. It's even received recognition on the Scientific American website. Hopefully, some of the attention and response from the Brain Scoop project will help Emily, who is one of only two full-time staff at the museum, and only a volunteer, renovate parts of the museum and keep up one of the best animal collections in that area of America. Emily Grassley also is on SciShow all the time now, too. All of these communities and channels and creators are so tight-knit that audiences are coming from every which way. And this is especially true for educational channels and specialty channels, both of which The Brain Scoop is. This is what The Brain Scoop story would look like in a communication model. YouTube is such a big site that it brings together the biggest names in edutainment. Some of our best professors might be on the web. 